Aloha Kohala. It is three o'clock here on Wednesday, November 3rd, 2021. You're listening to KNKRLP 96.1 FM Kohala. This is Isla Allgood here with uh, my co-host. Oh, wait a minute. I didn't have your mic up. Oh, Mikkel Anna. Thank Aloha. you. And this is Intuitive Talk Story. We were having uh, a discussion, as we usually do, before we even get started, to see where we want to start our day today, uh, talking about what's coming in, what we feel, what we sense, what we experience in the energy field. And uh, yeah, so um, one of the things we talked about was flow and flowing like the water. And where do yes. you want to start today, dear? Well. So, being in the flow. Um, yeah, being like water. A number of things I was sharing with Isla that were coming up this week in client work. So, kind of where I've been resonating and um, things have been really alive in conversation and in session work is just really coming into the heart of God in general, making that choice. And that's really the only choice to make. And so, we'll go further into that. But what that kind of first, we have to start to get flexible. We have to be flexible to move and change to meet the moment. We have to be willing to become like water, willing to go, oh, I'm not going that way now. I'm going this way. Oh, okay. Now this is happening. Let me flow with that Mm -hmm. because spirit is always working in the moment. And so when we're present, things are ever changing. It's an ebb and flow. So if we can become less attached to things, then we allow a greater experience to unfold. And when we say attached to things, it could be attached to activities, it could be attached to a person or people, it could be attached to how something's going to unfold, like say us getting together today. Uh, if If I had some attachment to it being a particular way, then I would maybe be stressed about that or be thinking about that instead of being present in what actually is. Yes. And it's so much less stressful. I get goosey is when I talk about that because when I'm in resistance of what's really happening, uh, I feel tense. I feel stress. I feel annoyed. I feel frustrated. But when I can just say, hey, this is where it is. This is where we're going. There's a ease that happens right and you're making a choice as i was saying Mm. to be in the heart of god Mm. you're as i was referencing like so you're making this choice we don't have to know the answer to things we think we have to know something let's say well i can't change it because i don't know i don't know what to do i don't have the answer but we don't have to have the answer that's the beautiful part we just have to make the commitment and the choice that I don't know, I don't have to know what to do, I don't know the right thing to say right now, but I can choose to commit to breathing, taking a deep breath, and the only choice I'm making is to come into the heart of God. And if I can come into the heart of God and become like water and come from my heart, what would what would God do? <laughs> you know, what would God do? Well, if I'm coming from the heart of God, I step into that and I allow that to be what fuels my decision. Now I might take a breath and go, right, I choose love. Okay, so I'm not going to respond to this person and be a jerk. You know, I'm going to respond and go, take a breath and go, okay, what is it you need? Or whatever the situation presents. Because you've given yourself the opportunity to take a breath, make a choice versus reacting, which is what we're almost always doing. Tapes just start playing and you go with it. So, the yeah, so uh, as you're talking about that, I've r- I feel like I've really been practicing all that a lot the past couple of months. And I want to say we haven't met together in a couple of months uh, to do the show. So it's wonderful to be back here with you. I feel like I've been on an, av- an adventure, but yet I feel very grounded here. Yeah. Um, so one of the things that I've been paying most attention to the past few months is kindness. Is if somebody says something or does something that has triggered me in the past or it's triggering me in that moment to start thinking right away kind how could I be kind kind to them kind to me Mm -hmm. in this moment and the more I can come to that word the less triggered I get the more I realize 
hey, whatever they said that that's ruffling me right now, it's not about them. It's about me. Yes. So, so I need to be kind. I need to be kind in how I approach this, whether I talk to the other person or people or not. Just in how I deal with me, I need to be kinder. Yes, I can relate. Mm. Um, you know, being patient, as I've said, is my <laughs> thing, and that comes across as being unkind when you're being impatient. Mm. I don't mean to be unkind, but it does come across that way. And of course, mm. you know, snappy, quick, you know, or any of those things. Yeah. So there are always things that, that I get to work on and <laughs> just taking a breath and giving thanks and, and just being present and knowing, well, where do you got to go? Or what do you got to do? Right. We take yeah. things so seriously. So we have to laugh at ourselves. Laughter I laugh at myself. is good. Like, yeah. Just laugh at myself. Yeah, whatever. Just <laughs> let it go. And we also have to let each other go you know, from what we may have known, like we live in a small town, we've all known each other from afar for many years and many, you know, situations around our town. So you have to let go of what you think you know someone else too, because that Mm. doesn't serve them or help them, right? You think, oh, well, that guy did blah, blah. Well, 10 years ago, he, well, that's 10 years ago. We all get to grow. We all are learning and we're, we don't want to judge or hold anyone anywhere because do you want to be judged or be held somewhere? No, you want to be able to grow and become whoever you are now. That's the whole point is to not stay the same. It's to continue evolving, being like water. You don't just stay stagnant. You move. It's a river of life. You're moving through the river and that's where the, you know, these, the, it's all one. It's just one big river. So there's no like hierarchy. There's just well, I pass that boulder and, you know, you're about to come up on it, you know, or, oh, the yeah. waterfall's coming up. Well, you still got a couple miles till you get it, but you're going to love it when you see it. So it is no like we're just in the river. We're in a river and it's and it's just all of us together as one thing. So there's no hierarchy. There's no um, competition. And any of those things really draw us back into the 3D paradigm and into, mm. um, you know, a lower chakras and into a more limited amount of thinking. But if we allow ourselves a space to open that up and and believe that we can change and be like water and we have the ability to make different decisions, well, then you realize you're the divine creator of your own life and you get to choose. And, you know, when you said judge, it made me think of something uh, somebody said to me the other day. They read something that I wrote and they said, wow, that is like really good. And I thought, I should... That, that that could feel positive, but there was something judgy about it. Because even when we say something positive, we're still judging, mm, right? So, so good, yes, yeah. that, oh, that was so good. You know, if you could describe what you mean by that, maybe, maybe what they meant is that really touched me. Mm-hmm. And that's not a judgment. That's, that's talking from self and self-experience. And, you know, I've done this plenty in my life. It's like, oh, that was so good. Oh, that's great. But really, we're just judging when we use words like that. Even even though it's meant to be a positive, it's more constructive to say what's working for you about what someone said or did. Uh, be more specific in how it impacted mm-hmm. you as a human. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm. because uh, kind of I like to do in person. I like to do this example where you know I have stuff in my hands, and maybe it's like a stuffed animal. Isla, you're so amazing. I put it on your lap. And then a pen. You're so, and and you're so fabulous, Isla. Oh, and I just, (laughs) your hair is amazing. And you just keep piling things on the person with every compliment and every, and every jab. Because whether it's a compliment or a jab, if there's energy attached to it, if it has some sort of judgment, attachment, then it's still an energy that gets put on you. It's not pure. It's not a neutrality. It's not in a place of just like blessings. It's, it still has something on it that also can become a weight can also become like a positive polarity, which are in- energies that are on the positive side. They, they make you think you're better than something. Yeah. And then the negative side, you think you're not good enough. So, mm-hmm. you know, you, they're both, they're both not in balance. Right. Mm-hmm. So we have to clear all that and, and choose again, choose that I'm connected to God of my heart and this mother earth and nothing else, nothing else, no other person, no other thought form, no like belief system you're connected to nothing else other because you don't need to be connected to anything other than source because source is all that is and aren't doesn't the, all the answers there and the more we are in tune with our own higher self our own intuition the more we can hear that uh that god within us right and we do that 
by tools. It's not. It's it's no different than anything else. Repetition mm. is the mother of all learning. I've been, as you know, I've been dancing and skating and doing things my whole life that create that are repetition. Mm-hmm. You put something in the body, and then it's just there. You don't think about it again. It's on the body computer. So that's what we're doing. And the way you can think of it as a fun metaphor is you're you're in a video game. You're in your own video game. We're all in our each our own video game. You're player number one. Nobody else really exists. (laughs) Remember, there's nobody out there. We talked about that a lot. Yes. And so you're player number one. You're in a video game. And guess what? You're leveling up. You just keep leveling up. It's a spiral. So we don't want to stop along the way and get attached to this thing or that thing and bogged down by this belief or that belief. Well, that person said this to me. Well, she did this to me. Who cares? It's not about them. They're not even there. They're not even there. there. They're not even there. (laughs) Nobody's out there. It's about you. What it's about is how you react, how you handle yourself. What choice do you make? The trick, the trick is to make it be about, well, she did this and they did that. And so that's why I did this. When we go into that, Mm. we've just lost because we're not taking self-responsibility. Nobody's in control of me. I made that choice. I acted that way. I did it. I have to own up for it. Right. I did it. You know, it's nobody else's fault how I behave. Um, there, how someone else behaves is their responsibility. It doesn't excuse anyone, but we all have to take our ownership for ourselves because the whole game's about you. It's like grow in spite of everybody. Grow in spite mm. of the people around you. Like, you're not taking me down. Mm-mm, I ain't going down. You want me to get mad right now and lose it and like go into ink? Nope, not doing it. Yeah. I'm going to evolve and I'm going to find my 1%, even if that's all it is. Yeah. And I'm going to take ownership for it. And I'm going to humble myself to God, to myself, see it, take ownership. Okay, I really could have done that different. Doesn't mean that whatever inspired after that is my fault, but I've taken part for mine. Go to the person. <clears throat> well, I'm sorry for that was bad timing on my part and walk away. No expectation of an apology, nothing because why I'm not there for them. <coughs> I'm apologizing for me, mm. for my own growth, mm-hmm. for my own evolution, for my path with God. And uh, you were talking about uh, whether it's your fault or not. And uh, I feel like a lot of us can fall into blame, whether we blame <coughs> ourselves or we blame somebody else. And, I try to look at it more as I'm, I'm having a, a, this experience in life <laughs> and there's going to be times where I do things that I'm not proud of or somebody feels sad about something I did or mad at something I did and that's part of my process is to acknowledge that and say okay uh, next time I'm going to make a better choice because I don't want to cause somebody pain or I don't want to uh, I don't want to upset other people. Uh, and as I'm saying this, I'm also thinking, (laughs) but I also can't constantly, um, monitor myself in a way that like homogenizes my behavior so that I don't piss anybody off because I, I have a bit of a history with that, which is people pleasing. (laughs) Not that people pleasing, just pissing people off. (laughs) Oh, well, mine's the opposite is (laughs) trying very hard (laughs) not to irritate anybody or upset anybody ah. so, so it's kind of in that way though you're not coming from the authentic self right you're coming from your own pr- a program it's it's that's my own a, program program right right so you get to so i have to recognize hey you know you need to speak your truth and if it pisses somebody off that's not your intention you deal with that later you can't constantly be monitoring mm. everything you say no in fact and i think you also like myself have the gift of truth Mm. So what happens with that is I understand greatly. Well, I've done the other side is I have pissed a lot of people off. <laughs> I've said way too much and been late to the ah, and they're like, she's so much, she's crazy, whatever it is. And I'm sorry to any of you out there. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, it's because we, we're we taking on these things and we're, we are um, formulating them into ourselves. Um, well, and, and, we, and we, need, we want to grow. We want to learn more about ourselves and the world around us. Um, and, and there's really no one way to do it. There's no perfect way to do it. It's really about you make messes, you clean them up. Uh, and you don't blame and you don't berate yourself and you don't berate other people. Uh, it's, it's just honoring who we are as humans. 
Ah, and what you were saying about when you see someone and you're going to irritate them or it's you don't try to walk on things. But yeah. thing is, it's mirrors. Back to the mirror concept. Um, mm. like I always talk about using the mirrors because you can't really see yourself in this video game. The only way to see yourself is through the other people. Right. You can't even see yourself in a mirror. You're backwards. That's not really you. You're distorted. <laughs> so you can't see your actual self. Mm -hmm. You see a distorted view of yourself. Mm -hmm. So the only way to see yourself is to use the energy of what reflects back at you when you talk to someone. When mm -hmm. someone triggers you, for instance, that's something in you that you didn't know. Oh, you're like, oh, I didn't even know that was there. Whoa, I'm feeling like I'm not good enough. Oh, that's in me. They're just showing me what's in myself. And if I'm using the mirrors and I, I, I pay attention and I actually use that, then I go, oh, that's still there. Where's that coming from? Hmm, that's coming from a father issue or whatever it is. And yeah. then you collect your pearl, as we've talked about, and bring it back into yourself and you heal it. Then you don't have any outstanding wounds and you're then taking control of those tapes. You're breaking the tapes and you're then giving yourself a breathing point to make a choice to breathe into the heart of God and make a different choice. Mm -hmm. and not react but respond mm -hmm. with kindness with kindness yeah and one of the things i was thinking of earlier today as i was thinking about us talking uh had to do with emotions you know as we were talking about go with the flow and when i look at whatever emotions come up uh the value of allowing those emotions to come up and out and to not suppress them yes and, Absolutely. you know, some of us grew up in an environment where suppressing emotions was the norm. Mm. So, you know, maybe we have had to learn how to even get to them or let them up. And then it's, well, now what do I do? I'm angry. What do I do with that? Do I throw this across the room and smash it into a million pieces? How do I deal with this anger? And that's part of our process is learning how to deal with it in a, in a safe way, whether it's anger or joy. Um, and the more we honor our emotions, the, the less numb we become. Like, I feel like there was a period in my life where I was, you know, you were talking, this comes up because you were talking about, like, somebody says something and you don't get flustered, right? You don't flip out. Mm -hmm. And yet when I think about that, I think, well, there was a time I didn't flip out over anything because I was so controlled. Mm -hmm. So that's not what we want to be doing. Mm -hmm. We want to be, we want to honor our emotions. We want to learn how to work with them and let them come up and out and not stuff them or control them or um, make ourselves numb so that we don't have to feel that extreme, whatever it is, you know, sadness, totally. anger, even joy. If you're, if, you're, if you're not feeling the anger once in a while, you're probably not having a whole lot of joy. You know, because you're in this kind of medium this place. This spectrum. Yeah. Well, yes and no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, actually, I think on the emotional realm, that's that's true. The pendulum mm. swings and the, we're talking brain and emotion, emotional body. Um, but joy is actually a vibration. Love is a vibration. Mm. They're vibrations. So it doesn't actually have to include emotion. It can just be a vibratory field. Like mm -hmm. you don't actually feel necessarily feel an emotion mm -hmm. you just feel the vibration of joy mm -hmm. you're you know like it might be accompanied with an emotion of something specific for somebody or something otherwise it's just an overwhelming vibratory feeling of like yeah i'm in joy and it doesn't have like a necessarily an emotional thread i understand i totally yeah. agree so the yeah. emotions what i think is really cool though what we were talking about is the emotions see show us where we're still holding stuff Mm -hmm. So if we are activating emotion, deep four or any emotion like we just talked about, we're, we have something there. Like, you know, when I get a little, you know, oh, well, that happened to me. My friend betrayed me. I know exactly what you're talking about. I could go on about this. <laughs> See, you know, I get emotional. I'm getting emotional because I have some energy on it. Like, that happened to me. I can relate. Yeah. See, and you have emotion because, well, I'm still a little angry. I'm still like, ooh, there's still emotion there. And yeah. so I'm going to get excited. If I'm willing to do what you just said, it is, which is really take back to taking responsibility, if I'm willing to honor my emotions, mm. honor what I'm actually feeling, I will do what I talk about, put my hands on my body yeah. and go, where is this actually coming from? Mm. What is this emotion really about? Because most likely it's not 
about what's right in front of me. It's something old. It's built in from earlier. I'm going on a tape and a reaction, I'm having a reaction. If I'm triggered, I'm having a reaction. That reaction's hitting something that was already there. Right. So what is it hitting? If I can ask that question to my inner self, and your inner child self could be seven or it could be your 35-year-old self. And when, if you've been in trauma, is trauma at any age. Mm-hmm. And trauma isn't just like abuse or horrible things. Trauma is just not feeling at all in your power, feeling safe, maybe, you know, just in some capacity, not feeling heard or valued. You know, all of those things, can we can have traumas in many different ways. They don't have to be really obvious ones. In fact, we all come from trauma. All of us are dealing with some level of trauma, you know, for the most part, unless you've worked it out and you've dealt with yourself and you've looked at yourself until one faces themselves, there's going to be a bit of trauma, emotion, and that fluctuating up and down experiencing of the pendulum of emotion Mm -hmm. because of that. Because we're activating wound, and then we're oh, and then we're letting it go. And then we're activating, it. <laughs> but once we heal the wound, we don't have to do that pendulum swing anymore. We can just sit in a vibration, and it doesn't really activate emotion in the same way. Do you think that one needs like something happens and I'm triggered? Do you do you feel or sense that I need to know exactly what's being triggered in order to work with that? Not right in that second, no. I, if It depends. Like, there's all every situation is your own. Let's say you're in the conversation. You can't walk away. If you can walk away, the best choice is walk away. Give yourself more time. Yeah. So if you can go, you know what, I'll, I'll be back. Let's talk in five. Or, you know, go to the bathroom. I need to go breathe. Yeah. The bathroom <laughs> is always a safe the place to go. The bathroom's a great place. You could go to the bathroom anywhere. If you're in a restaurant, go to the bathroom. You know, it's your <sighs> best office. Go yeah. in the bathroom and be with your, like, breathe and put your hand on your heart and on your on your abdomen and just kind of like, okay, what's going on? What am I feeling? Why am I feeling so angry right now? Yeah. What's really going on? And you might hear, like, well, she offended me. She's trying. She doesn't think I'm good enough. Oh, I'm running. I'm not good enough. It's not really about Susie Q in this moment who doesn't think I'm good enough. If I sense more into it, what's that really from? Oh, well, my you know, my mother or my father or my whoever used to always tell me, I, you know, you don't do a good job. You'll never amount to anything. These are obvious examples. But then that set in a place mm-hmm. where I went, oh, I guess not. And I dropped my power on the floor with my, you know, my father or whatever. And I set in an I'm not good enough pattern. So now every time I hear something similar, it ignites that. So the program I'm not good enough starts running and I feel reactive. What? They don't think I'm good enough? But that's really a wound. So mm-hmm. if I'm willing to look deep in there and go, oh, it's really from that. Okay, let me show my little girl or myself that they're just wounded too. That's why they acted like that. Nobody really means to. We're all just kids, like hitting each other because someone hit me in the eye, and so I'll hit you in the eye. So that's all we are, and so we're not meaning it. We just don't understand, and we, we know it's a hard game coming into this density place. So that's, again, back to being kind to ourselves. This is a tricky game, so we need to be gentle and love ourselves through it and go, it's okay that we make mistakes. It's okay that we screwed up. We don't. We get to make different choices. We're not held to anything we've done in the past. You only hold yourself to those things. So feel it, honor it, and let it go. And allow yourself to forgive yourself and another person and see that you know we're all just part of one another. And you let the energy go. You claim your power back to you. Like, yes, okay, that's mine, and now I can make a choice, and my and now I'm stalking the mind. So maybe I go back out and go, thanks, Susie, for that constructive criticism. I'm going to get right back on that memo. Appreciate it. No, no drama. Nothing happened. Susie Q doesn't know what just happened. I just had a great breakthrough, but Susie Q knows nothing about it. I just, she just knows I'm doing the memo. It's all good. But normally, maybe I would have reacted. Susie Q and I would have gotten in a fight. I would have felt, you know, not well for the rest of the day. That might have been a whole different scenario, but now I've made a new choice that I'm going to think I'm worthy and I'm good enough and I'm not going to choose to react because that's not what this is about anyway. It was about something else and I'm just projecting here because I'm using the mirrors because I can't actually see what wounds I still have until somebody brings them up. Mm -hmm. And sometimes uh, I find it beneficial to acknowledge 
uh, my own progress. It's like, wow, I didn't react. Yes, I must have handled that. At least for today, you yes. know. Maybe I've had, you know, I've 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 made some progress. It's in important my to tell you to yourself, you're doing a great job. Yeah. I'm doing a great job. I'm doing it. Look yeah. at me. I just did that. Yay! Yeah. But, well, nobody's gonna do it for us. No. We have to do it for ourselves. So yes, mm. absolutely, we celebrate our successes. Celebrate. We celebrate little little ones. Like, yep, I didn't react today. I didn't do like you said. Yeah. I was so nice. Oh my gosh, that was great. I was so patient. And I love the fact that I didn't react internally. You know how yes. sometimes, yes. yeah, you can put that smile on and yes. you're like, oh, no, I'm good. But, but you you're actually like, felt Arr. neutrality. Yes. And that's what it's all about. Yeah. Then you know there's nothing left yeah. there. Yeah. Wow, that was lovely. Yeah. You're like, okay, but good. I'm nothing, nothing. Check caught. that one exactly. off. Exactly. <laughs> Boom. I'm good. Thank you. That's done. All right. What else you got for me? Let's go see some other reflections. Yeah. Anything come up? Anything there's come always up? another one. What? It, 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 Anything hitting? You're testing it out. Uh, did I get you? I, nothing. I got you guys got nothing on me. You got nothing <laughs> on me. No holes. No holes. I'm leveling up. I'm leveling up. What do you mean by no holes? Say so what you mean by that. I mean like there's no entry points for negative thoughts. Like mm. I think uh, think of the thoughts and the programmings as like little snakes. They're like slithering around. When you go into a low energy, back to vibration, which mm. if you listen to our shows, we've talked about. But vibration, everything has a vibratory field. When you get into the higher realms of love, joy, gratitude, appreciation, you're literally resonating in a higher, a 500 and higher vibratory field, um, energetically speaking. And that, and that vibratory field these lower denser like kind of denser energies like anger and hate and mm. blah blah they can't actually live there they're too dense they they can't exist in the frequency so when we drop down into like anger that means i had a hole it means if someone was able to make me get angry they're not making me do anything right i'm making myself but they i means out a hole somewhere uh, oh, I still have a father issue. Oop, they got in the patriarchal line. Oop, that just got my ego. Oop, I just got some blasted. Oop, I still think I'm not good enough. And I got taken down into a lower realm, which mm -hmm. means I had a hole. Now that I'm in a lower realm of energies, everything's coming for me. Ooh, you're down here. Yeah, you know, you really are suck. You're really not good enough. You know how when you start going low and you get depressed, it's like all comes at once and you're like, oh God. And then the thoughts, the thoughts the start thoughts. feeding that negativity. That's what the snakes are. They're yeah. the thoughts. Mm -hmm. They come, you can imagine them because they're not really you. They're programs. Mm -hmm. They're not yourself. And like you were saying before, you were numbed. The programs just run and you're like, whatever, the programs are just running. When you started peeling them away, you started waking up and acknowledging, oh, I'm in charge of this vessel. Mm -hmm. Oh, and if I'm not in charge, something else is. Right. So I have to decide I'm in charge of this thing. I'm running this show. I'm not good enough program. You don't have place here. Name your programs. Name your, your voices. If they have, you have a lot of voices, if you have loud voices, judge is a loud voice. Defense is a loud voice. Um, call him, you know, uh, my judge was Gertrude, you know, like, like Gertrude. <laughs> Give her a name. Give her a name, her, him, whatever. Yeah. Because you're like, uh-uh, Gertrude, is that you talking? I am listening to you. That is a stupid advice. I'm not taking it. I'm in charge here. Mm -hmm. You're not in charge, Mr. Judge, Miss Judge. I'm in charge. I'm running the show and mm -hmm. I'm choosing the heart of God because I'm in charge. I am the light and I get to choose. I choose love. See, and that's the choice we get to make. But we make it harder for ourselves when we dip down in that hole. Mm -hmm. When we dip down, we have to then get back up, which means we have to rise up the vibratory ladder again. And we have to get out of anger. And the best way to do that is go into gratitude because gratitude mm -hmm. is the fastest way to get up. If you can be grateful, and there's so much to be grateful for. I have a huge catalog in my head, but you know, find your catalog and then you just take an image. Poop up. I'm grateful. What do you need me to do? You know, there's a lot of things you can think of that make you grateful. Just for me, even simply a hot shower is in, I'm incredibly grateful for that. I can just go into a lot of great gratitude just to be able to have a hot shower. And um, but whatever you can have in your image, use that because gratitude, you know, they average. That's math, right? If I'm at 200 and gratitude's at. Oops, whoops sorry. 
I move my arms a lot, Latina. Uh, <laughs> and, and then 600, then I average out, right? I get to the medium of the two. So I just jump myself up a little bit. If I can grab some more gratitude and keep it rolling, well, now I'm gonna jump up some more. Then I can get some appreciation. Wow, I'm appreciating, oh, appreciating mm-hmm. you, appreciating this, appreciate. Now I just jump myself back up the ladder and I'm back into a higher vibration where I'm not getting bombarded as much with those and those negative energies and voices. Not to say I won't be tested, because like we just said, it's a video game. So you're leveling up. So you're literally, if those of you who play video games, it's like that. You're like on the dun 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 dun. <laughs> gotta get your stuff. Gotta get my thing. Gotta get my secret kiff. You're you're finding your stuff, and as you see it, poof, 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 and then you're like, oh, I got it. That's my secret stuff. That's my you know my power that was in my first chakra that was saying I'm not safe. I'm not valued. But I just picked it up. I'm valued. I'm safe. Bam! Put it in there. Mm-hmm. Let's go. And then you're gonna get tested. That whole rest of that level. Are you really safe? Are you really think you are? Mm-hmm. Really? You picked it up, but do you really? Are you sure you don't want to drop it again? And they will test you. So you have to, nope, I'm solid. I'm safe. I'm safe. I'm worthy. I love myself. Uh, you're not going to get me. Got no holes. <laughs> Got no holes until I get to the next level. I could. <laughs> and you get to the next level. It's a spiral. You spiral up to that next level. Bam, you held it. Boom. You actually like phew, leveled up. Bah, they get a gold star. Phew. There's actually no rewards, no punishments. So don't go into that one. But it is a level up for yourself. And there is, I guess, no gold stars, which is why it, it, it's, it's your own joy. It's, a, it's personal achievement. It's personal it's, achievement. Yeah, it's you, evolution. Yeah. It's growth. And it feels good. It feels positive. It feels, um, it feels delicious. Yeah. Yeah. And you get to own that next place. And once you've owned it, it kind of settles in right then. Click, right? You leveled it through all the spirals. You own it now. Mm. Now there's a new thing to get. And you got to go get another thing. And you just keep doing that over and over, right? We just level up getting new things. And there's a spiral run. There's always that like end of the spiral where you're like, ah, I got it. Yeah, I'm feeling good. I got this. That's right before the next lesson You can comes. just relax into you that relax. For, for a while. Yeah, it's like going on the downhill before you're about to go up the uphill again. Yeah. So you're like coasting on the downhill, giving thanks. Enjoy and those last moments. Yeah. Here we go. We're cruising. Cruising. I leveled yeah. up. Yes, mm. I did it. And now, boom. Okay, next mountain. Now what you got for me? Okay. So you're gearing yeah. up for the next time because it's like that. It's all cycles, right? Everything's moving in cycles. Mm-hmm. So we're learning and growing, applying, implementing, and then moving forward. You said something before about uh, light, you know, that it brings more light into us as we evolve, uh, expanding our consciousness and going from the angry place to the grateful place to the joyful place. And one of the things that I think about that motivates me sometimes is if I'm, as I go through this process and I honor my light and allow more of my light to shine, that is there for other people to do the same, to be, uh, to model for other people. And, and it does, it works. You know, if you've been around someone who's, you know, laughing and joking and having a good time, and you came into the space, maybe not feeling that way, it lifts you up. And uh, hopefully our conversations uh, do something for you where there's a lift and there's also an understanding that you get on some level. Maybe you don't get it intellectually, but maybe somehow you know, yeah, something, yeah, I like what they said about this or she said that or, you know, you take, like we said before, you take what we say, take what gems are in there for you and something we say doesn't resonate for you, you know, just let it go and that's not for you today and that's As fine they say take what you need and leave the rest yeah yeah and we have to take a break speaking of taking things so let's take a break we've been chitty chatting for a while we'll be right back Women's Voices on KNKRLP 96.1 FM Kohala with your host Isla Allgood. I'm proud to say that I've been doing this show now for six years and I still find amazing songs and spoken words by female artists from right here in Kohala and 
around the world. Tune in to 96.1 FM or stream live at www.knkr.org. Aloha, North Kohala. Kohala Cares has moved its weekly food drive to the hub parking lot. Those in need can drive to the parking lot and pick up a bag of groceries. Pickup begins at 4.30 every Wednesday. Please wear a mask. Donations, especially produce, will be accepted Wednesday from 11 to 3. We want to thank all our donors and volunteers for making all this happen. Remember, we're all in this together. Mahalo. You are back here at KNKRLP 96.1 FM Kohala uh, with Intuitive Talk Story with Isla Allgood and Mikkel Anna. And we've been talking about lots of things today. And one of the things I wrote down earlier was about balance, finding balance in our lives and, um, and the need to, to be centered. Uh, and, and what does that actually mean and how does that help us? So um, I think some people, wh- one of the things I see and I experience is sometimes I get out of balance, meaning maybe I'm doing way too much over here and I'm not tending to my my food and my exercise and my nutrition in the way that it's going to support me and my all the other things I want to be doing in my life um, and how to recognize that. So, so I would say, here's an, I'm going to make up a new acronym right now. TTT, tend to your trinity. Oh, I like that. I just made that up. <laughs> so tend to your trinity, which is your body, mind, spirit. So make sure that when you're doing like, because if you think of it as triangle, right, yeah. and you are moving it upward, if you just do one point, the whole other thing's not going. You, if you can't actually go, you're dragging it. If you only do one side, you have to do this side, then this side, then this side. You have to inch each one up mm-hmm. for it to move upward. So you have to do the body, mind, the spirit, body, mind, spirit all together. That's why you're using um, what we've talked about before, spiritual tools. Energy management tools is really what it is. It's managing your energy, learning that like I'm an energetic vessel and, you know, navigating your field of energetics and protecting your space and removing cords and owning your energy so that you're protected through your day. You're connected to source, the God of your heart and the earth and you're moving through your day from that vantage point. And then when you sleep, you're doing the same thing so that you're in a a protected field as you sleep and you're holding your energy. That's like, these are, this is foundational. So AM, PM, Mm. that. Then, you know, honestly, if you're really moving and working on something, you're really doing stuff all day long. You're in your car, you're doing mantras, you're talking to your, you know, your thoughts are coming up and you're squashing them as they come up. You're watching your mind. That's that stalking part. So you're now you're doing that. You're like noticing what I do. I've talked about this before, but one of the practices I love is just because you have to do self inquiry and you have to make yourself because we don't like to look at what we do wrong. We don't look at ourselves. We don't want to talk about it. I did. No, don't bring it up. It's over. Right. I don't want to talk about it. Mm-hmm. But we need to look at it because then we see ourselves. So I would sit under the sky at night, go over my whole day, each moment, like everything, like the post office, you know, the gas station, every little interaction and just see where was I at and what was I acting like and from why. And, and you know, sometimes, oh, I was really short with that person. Ooh, I was kind of abrupt. I'm sorry. I was, oh, I was feeling like I was feeling insecure. I was feeling not good enough. Right. And then I could forgive myself, move through it, give myself what I need. And in the ethers, I'd ask forgiveness to the post office person or the whoever, like they're never going to hear it from me, but I'm doing it for me, Mm -hmm. you know, in myself and I'm clearing the energy and I'm, I'm owning my behavior for myself and I'm being self-reflective. That process is really powerful in, um, tearing away and being honest with yourself. It allows you to see a lot. And if you're really honest and willing, then you get to break things quick because you're like, oh, that was me. Oh, geez. Oops. (laughs) All right. I give thanks. I humble Mm. myself. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. That's a a powerful scripture for me um, in my life. It's it's given me a lot of strength and a lot of deep places. So those are powerful things to draw upon. Yes. And... As you were talking about 
you know, talking to the person at the post office that maybe you were abrupt with uh, or said something that wasn't very kind, uh, I was thinking about telepathy and the fact that we may be doing that for ourselves in that moment, yes, and everything is energy. So if I have an experience with somebody 3,000 miles away that wasn't, you know, say we had a, an unpleasant phone conversation, I can talk to that person, even though they're 3,000 miles away, and send them positive energy and send them my positive intentions. And I find it really makes a difference. I do this a lot. I've mm-hmm. been doing this more and more lately. Yes. It's like if I have a disagreement with someone, instead of going into why I'm right, <laughs> I go in, I, I, first I recognize, okay, that's not going to help. So what could I do? Well, I could talk to the person as if they're sitting here in front of me, talking, but talk kindly. Don't blame them. Don't make them wrong. But just talk kindly to them and say, wow, you know, whatever it is that I need to say to convey uh, in a way that's kind and loving. Or maybe just send them love. It doesn't even have to be so complicated, right? It doesn't. And and, and in general, what you're seeing is that where is our true power? Our true power is actually not in the external. It's in our internal life. Mm -hmm. And it's in manifesting, creating, praying, doing the, the energetic and spiritual work. Because this is actually where everything's happening. This, what we see out here is just the 3D manifestation of what's going on in the 4D, 5D, 6D, 7D, 80, 90, uh, you know, in the 33 levels. So it's, that's, <laughs> that's the, what's the really how many happening. I mean, my understanding in this moment, yeah. 33. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. As in dimensions. Okay. Mm-hmm. 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 And uh, <laughs> I didn't want to just let that go. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm not, no definitives here. Um, you know, it's your experience. We're all having experience, and there's just yeah. infinite amount of information and knowledge, um, mm-hmm. and interesting. You know, I, there's so much, and that's part of the. Uh, oh, that brings up back to water. Part of the other really important part about waking up. If you're just waking up, or you're just feeling like, wow, maybe things aren't what I thought they were out there. Something doesn't seem right. There's a lot of absurdity going on. What's with the emperors wearing no clothes? If you're thinking any of those things, then you're literally, um, you know, you're starting to see what's what's really, you're shedding the layers of what's happening. And that can seem kind of confusing and like, you know, what's going on? Um, so just draw into your own personal strength. You trust yourself. All I can say is trust yourself. And listen to no one. You are a Jedi. Uh, we're all mm-hmm. Jedis on the journey. So be a Jedi and listen to yourself and let whatever's being uncovered be uncovered. Because here in the water thing, back to that, you got to be wrong about, well, pretty much everything. The real like wake ups are, well, we are so wrong about everything we thought. What like, we thought what was. What we thought uh, was, was many things yeah. is not. And yeah. we have to be willing to be wrong, which means we have to give up. If we watched a million history shows, we've listened to a million <laughs> political shows. Mm. Well, I know history well. No, I have I know studied the war world. I know really about the back of my hand. Well, do you? Because actually in order to really see this, this uh, fabulous Hollywood earth show that we're in, mm-hmm. you have to be willing to be wrong. You have to go, oh, all of us wrong? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Okay. So we throw the whole thing out. Uh-huh. Oh. So, and that's difficult for a lot of people because we get attached to what we think we know. We don't want to be wrong. Well, I think especially when we've been taught in school. For so long. Oh, you've been taught so many things for so long. Right. And it's in the textbook. Yeah. And we were tested on it. Someone told me. Yeah. So it's, it's questioning. I think it's really valuable. I think this is something I find really valuable for my own growth is questioning. Questioning what I read in the newspaper, right. questioning what I see on the internet, questioning what uh, some politician tells me. You know, okay, they say this, and that's scary. What do I feel about this? And really go into what do I feel about it intuitively, not, not emotionally, but intuitively about what I'm hearing. Oh, that's, that's a different reality. That's not, that's not true for me. Well, and if what you're feeling when you hear about what's going on out there is fear, if that's what you're feeling, mm. then that is showing you that fear is what's still harboring in myself. I'm still really activating in fear. 
if you're willing to look at that and take ownership of where does that really come from, it's not really this thing going on right now. It's in me. It's something mm. in myself. And if I'm willing to, to do that and use this as a mirror and go use it to do my inner work, then I get to move, right? I get to like let go. I get to level up. I get to be wrong about a lot of stuff and be like water, get flexible, feel it, honor my emotions, and let it go. Stock the mind, make a choice to move into the heart of God. And, and with that, I feel is this unlimited potential for a new reality. Absolutely. And that is the joy. And that <laughs> is That's the prize. That's what the is being prize. created right yes. now. And there are many people activating mm. that. We are, it is time and we are all, those who choose to do so, are activating the new earth mm-hmm. filled with connection to the earth, to one another, to love, harmony, cooperation, and um, authentic communication and, and moving to places of valuing each other's inherent gifts and realizing that we're all valuable and we're all amazing. Um, we've come from an old paradigm where if someone over there is fabulous, it means I'm not fabulous. Well, we're entering the new paradigm, which is, you know, oneness. And in unity, you were all fabulous. You're fabulous and your fabulousness takes nothing away from my fabulousness. Right. We all get to be amazing in who we are and we get to honor each one another's gifts and reflect that to one another and use the mirrors not to defend and hurt one another, but instead to grow. See that, well, this is just thank you for showing me um, a mirror of myself so I can move fast because I want to level up. It's not a personal game. We get stuck a lot because we take things personal. So four Toltec agreements. I actually happen to have about a quarter Toltec in my beingness, but my uh, my blood, but the Toltec principles. What is that? Toltec is a heritage, but uh, Miguel Ruiz, the Toltec, um, Mm -hmm. the Four Agreements, he Mm -hmm. wrote the Four Agreements, which is Toltec wisdom, which is take nothing personal, make no assumptions, always be impeccable with your word, and always do your best. If you're doing those four things, you're doing a lot. Mm -hmm. Taking nothing personal is a huge one because we take everything personal. If you start paying attention to that, you're like, why am I taking all this personal? Why, why do I do this? Why, it's just, not about me. It's not about you. <laughs> it's just not about you. It's about them. Everyone's in their own movie and it's all about them. Everyone's yeah. concerned with themselves. So it ain't about you. So mm. just deal with yourself. So taking that thing personal, if you can do that, you can hear everything from an objective place. And then you have the, then it goes back into communication, reaction, responding. We then choose instead of to make a judgment or reaction, we choose to seek to understand. And that's another mantra you can tell yourself, I wanna choose to seek to understand this person. Uh, What did you say? Instead of saying, what'd you say to me? Excuse me? Say, you know, I'm sorry. I don't know if I understood you correctly. Could you please repeat what you're saying to me and explain it a little further? Because I, I might say, well, because in my mind, I'm thinking you just called me out. But I'm not going to really know and I don't need to react because this is my friend. This person loves me and cares about me. Obviously, Mm -hmm. they're not trying to put me down and I need to remember that now and know that this is someone who loves me. So they don't have a desire to hurt me. So let me let me seek to understand. So that's embracing, right? Versus resisting. That's a really that's another real key point and it comes up all day every day when you're working through yourself, right? Is embrace or resist. Am I going to embrace this moment and choose to enter into love? Open my heart. Embrace, choose love, okay, give me a hug. Okay, I'm letting it go. Okay, I love you. I'm choosing love for myself, for everyone else. Or do I choose to go forget it? You're I'm I'm getting out of here. Whatever. I don't want to talk to you. <sighs> Whatever. See ya. What do I choose? Right? Mm-hmm. I have a choice. Embrace. Remember, you're not embracing for anyone else. It's not like they're winning because you embrace. The, the voices will tell you, don't do it. Then you, she's going to win. You're going to make her right. It's not about her. Remember, you're player number one. Nobody's out there. <laughs> so do it for yourself. It's a game. It's a game. You're getting tested. Are you going to hold it or are you going to get tricked by the character in front of you? Up to you. I think... I think uh Asking questions when you're in a situation where uh, you, you're feeling triggered, where you feel like you want to get angry or you want to react, but to be able to go to, uh, you know, maybe I'm not understanding you. Could you explain what you meant by that? Because I know this has happened to me a lot in my life. What I heard mm-hmm. and what that person said 
is not the same. Is not the same. Now, on another plane, I'm sensitive to energy. So this person could have said, "You're you're a lovely person," and I heard something else because I feel something else. So I also don't want to discount those of you out there that mm-hmm. are uh, intuitive, empathetic, psychic, where you actually you you hear something that that hasn't been said because you're feeling certain vibrations from well, somebody. Well, here's a real obvious one. I love this one. I'm not angry. No, I'm not angry. I'm not angry. Oh, you're like, oh, okay. Okay. I'm oh, sure you're not. Okay. For instance, yeah. like obviously my words aren't matching my vibration. Right. Right. And so there's an energy that's behind my words. What's happening is I'm not admitting it to myself mm-hmm. in that moment. I'm not able to see myself and admit it in that second. Mm-hmm. Right. So that's our goal is to be able to admit whatever's going on, admit it to ourselves realizing this the ego wants you to go you know well you be so and so don't you'll be lower than it's so it wants to do all these weird things and you have to really we realize well actually humbling myself means actually embodying the higher version of myself and ego gets to take a second ride mm-hmm. he you're in charge of the ego it's not in charge of you so you we become its master and that's really what all of the separation is, right? It's, 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 it's the thing that's broke off from God that wants to be its own master. I'm the important. I'm the thing. I'm it. But it has to feed on God's creation, on the infinite light in order to keep living because it has no light of its own, right? Because it's broken off from God. But it's still God. It's like the tree and it's a fruit that's like, I'm my own fruit. I'm so important. Look at me. Aren't I amazing? Bet, bet, bet. But I got to nibble on the tree still because I don't have any life force. Hang, 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 hang. And really, it just needs to drop to the ground and compost and become part of the tree again. It's all one thing. Mm-hmm. It's just forgotten who it is. We've just forgotten who we are. So we have to remember by taking control of that and so choosing to sit in the heart of God. I'm the master of this ship. This is my spaceship, my vessel. I choose this. I run this vessel. I am free. I am love. I am sovereign. We claim it, and so shall it be. Mm. I was watching a program last night about Native American uh, people, and it was very inspiring about how they work together and live together and are uh, working the land more together now because they've been in these food deserts where they're you know, the, having diabetes and all kinds of health problems because they they didn't have access to food. But now there are people within their communities who are it was the Apache. They were mm. they're growing they're growing. Oh, I just got goose. I'm Apache. <laughs> I knew you were going <laughs> to say that. <laughs> they're growing their own food. They're 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 preparing their own food for their people mm. in their communities, and there's so much joy in the, them coming together and doing this. It was, it was, you know, we're in an agricultural community where we do come together. Uh, and it inspired me to say, you know what, I'd like to be doing more togetherness yes. uh, with people because that's, that's what it's all about. It's not about who, who has the most of this or who has the best of that. When you come together, you just share your gifts and everybody rises up together. That's right. And, um, you know, my sweetheart and I have been working in Africa for the last almost decade. And um, that's really my experience of working in Africa is so profound. Um, Really just creating this bridge because it's the evolved village and we have a lot of access to resources. We're all very, in America, we're very used to having this. We don't go without a lot. Most people are not, have never gone without. Mm -hmm. They have. We're used to it. You expect it. And... The, what's present there is you have people who are in, in more poverty, right? And there's less having this. There's only one of something and everyone's fighting for the same thing. So that sense of lack is, you know, our consciousness. It's in our consciousness. Mm-hmm. So what we get to bring is resources, right? And and having this and what, what the Guinea people for me and for, you know, I've watched a lot of people have magical experiences is what you just described because the depth of family, togetherness, connectedness that a person feels, I've seen people overwhelmed by that connectedness. Like I've never experienced this much Like a love. Westerner. A mean. Westerner. Yeah. yeah. Like I've never experienced this much authenticity. Yeah. 
authenticity. And I've yeah. never experienced this much closeness, like being part of like a village where you're mm. literally with 20 people for a month and you're seeing each other every day and you're never really alone. And, and there's some, you're held in this energy of love mm-hmm. that is in a present in in all of our tribal peoples, I mean, Hawaii, you know, mm-hmm. our local people, same thing. Mm-hmm. We all, like, you know, I'm, I'm Latina and Native American. We come, same thing. Our, a lot of our tribal ways have all, they're all the same. It's we come from food and mm-hmm. family and, and ethics, you know, values. Be respectful, be respectful. Listen to, listen to your aunties, listen to your parents. Mm-hmm. You know, um, take care of, be a good steward of what you've been given, right? There's these values inherent. And that's a lot of what we've lost in this time period. Here in America, we've lost the connection to values. There's no respect for the parents. And I mean, we just have lost this. I don't know where it went, but it's not here in most places, you know, mm. in, in the average, you know, you see so many kids talk back to their parents. That, I, I mean, if I spoke to my mom that way when I was that age, I would not be flying, you know? And so we've just had yeah. such a change because I think we've tried to go the other way. We've tried to play. We don't want to do anything wrong. So now we've done what you do. I want to please everyone. Yeah. I want to tiptoe around everyone, but that doesn't serve either. Cause now I make you the tyrant. Cause now I've actually, actually breeded the tyrants mm-hmm. we breed we let you do whatever you wanted and call you on anything and now ah, no boundaries no boundaries yeah so, we all need our boundaries yeah right. and and when you're part of a community like that it's not all up to one person either well, this is one of the things that i've really come to see over my 60 years is that you know the nuclear family where you just have one or two parents with kids and no help. doesn't work. It's horrible. It's it doesn't so work. hard. It's the village. It takes the village yeah. to raise a child, and that's the truth. Because yeah, you neighbors need and friends and aunties and well, cousins. And, and literally in the village, like, you know, and even in here, like, you know, if multi-families in a house, that grandma yep. and grandpa, everyone's there. It's different. You know, you have lots of people, their connection that the child has to multiple people. I'm not afraid of a lot of people because I'm used to being around people. Right. I'm used to connecting and learning from different people. So there's a lot gets opened up because we're all just stewards and helpers of one another we're all just souls on a journey you steward that child to come in you're their mother and you're they're just a soul on their journey and you've made an agreement to help guide them on this journey so we all get to we get to honor one another from that vantage point yeah recently i um connected with some cousins and i found out like the first five years of my life i was constantly with family we lived across the street from my grandparents. And what I didn't realize is my aunt lived there. My cousins lived there. There were all these people all the time. And then we moved to the suburbs and there was nobody. And it's and it was so joyful to connect with them again and talk about that. And th- I could feel their joy, you know, because mm-hmm. one of them was 80 years old. So, you know, he has a lot of memories of things that I don't remember. I was just a little kid. And there was, he said, that was like the richest time of my life because we were all there, all the, you know, interacting all the time, having meals together. And, you know, what a beautiful thing. Mm, it is so beautiful. Yeah. And um, we're actually going to be playing, if, in case anyone hears over the next few days, we're actually going to be doing a lot of music uh, to our town here. If you hear us playing, just give thanks and garden mm. and enjoy it, please. Um, we're just doing some small group of workshops um, over the next few days. So if you hear the some music, drumming. a lot of You'll drumming, we'll be doing, be doing drumming. drumming. You'll be hearing the drums probably way through town. And that was one of the things that was spoken about last night in this program, and it made me think I need to drum more, mm. is that connection, that how drumming is connecting to the earth. Absolutely. And it's and so for me, when I hear drumming, it is very mesmerizing for me. It, it like takes me someplace. So those of you who might ride by and hear it and say, oh my God, that's loud, Think about it differently. Think about how it's connecting to the earth and connecting to your heartbeat. Exactly. And you're also uh, making yourself smarter. You're connecting your right and left brain because you're doing two different things and you're feeling Mm -hmm. time. You're getting into that energetic pocket, which kind of that energetic pocket of being in the, as a musician would say, get in the pocket. Mm. You feel like there's no, there's no time there. Like things go fast or slow, but it still feels the same. There's no like, whoa, or, uh. so we want to sit in that pocket. So sitting in the pocket, vibrationally, music helps us do that dance, surfing, anything that gets you present helps you drop into that left, right brain connection and get present. If you are interested in learning more about drumming or any of those things, you can reach out to me, um, lavaroots at gmail.com. 
Thank you, Mikhail, for being here, and thank you out there for listening and uh, giving us feedback. We really love to hear your feedback uh, after you hear our shows. Yes, we do. So we can better serve those out there who are really just us, right? <laughs> yes, we're all reflections of one another. So and thank you for sharing with us and reflecting with yes. us and taking these morsels and implementing them and making them part of your life. Until next time. Aloha, everybody. Aloha in living light.